This is London calling in the overseas service of the British Broadcasting Corporation. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Pocket battleship, Graf Spee, which has been for many weeks preying upon the trade of the South Atlantic and met her doom. Mother dear, I'm riding you from somewhere in France, hoping this finds you well. We shall fight in France, we shall fight on the seas and oceans, we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall never surrender. of the RAF with the Navy. And Rodney, which did some pretty work with her 16-inch guns. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. <laughs> but the Japanese high command had declared that a state of war existed with Great Britain and the United States. The German Navy, so proudly built up by that smug strategical genius, the Führer, is slowly but surely being wiped out. Now the Scharnhorst, the 26,000-ton battleship, has gone to the bottom not unusual result of action against the Royal Navy. Led by a powerful British escort, the main body of the surrendered Italian fleet is transferred from Malta to Alexandria. Signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force. the China Sea for the last large-scale surrender at Hong Kong, where today warships of the Royal Navy ride at anchor in the harbor. And now for something completely different. Well, hello and welcome back to the war. I'm the Gap Major, and uh, this is 
Ever so slightly different, I guess you say. Well, today we're going to be taking a first look at the Arc Royal Tier 5 Premium and the Perf Tier 5 Premium. We'll also maybe take a look at some of the other things which are in the port. Now, um, by different, I mean basically, I'll probably keep the division closed, I'll probably just keep it uh, keep it solo. And also, we're going to be focusing on those ships and maybe we might dabble in something else as we get further on in the stream. Anyway, I haven't actually um, booted up the game proper, uh, so we are here at the entry screen I guess you could say. Um, first point I guess maybe we could mention is um, the first Royal Navy Premium aircraft carrier has arrived to rule the skies. Watch out carpet bombers and the big squadrons make her either uh, a dangerous adversary or a reliable ally. Carpet bombers. Well we'll see about that I guess you could say. We also have Light in the Dark and this also includes the Commonwealth Tier 5 Premium Cruiser Perf and also Perf comes with her commander uh, Farkham as well. Uh, PlayStation deal, uh, Eagles, uh, the rest of it is all pretty much the standard stuff that you can expect as you've been booting up. So we can have a quick look and see what's kicking around. Now one of the things that obviously has added to the game uh, with the uh, drop, I guess you could say, of this um, additional content um, is obviously the Halloween container. So we will take a look at those. And uh, today we have a nice cup of coffee to keep us company uh, throughout the stream, uh, or at least at the start of the stream, uh, just, just to... Just to perk us up a little bit, because it hasn't been a, a work day as always. Good day, uh, Zuma. Good day, good day. Right. Into the store. Um, let's have a look. So, there is the free spooky crate. And so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pick that one up, because it's free. Um, Perf is 10,000 shards. Um, and you'll only be able to collect 9,000 and something shards through the actual event. So, therefore, in order to actually acquire her, you will require doubloons, unfortunately. Um, Farcom's actually available for Commander XP, which is quite interesting. So she, he's not entirely locked behind the perf, which is definitely of interest. Um, obviously the Commander guys is, seriously, just to steer clear, they're only just cosmetical. There's some camouflages, um, one's of Furious, which is quite interesting, and Dark Royal. And then we also got some camouflages from previous years. And is there an idea what the Furious would look like? I mean, it doesn't look too bad I guess. Maybe we'll take a look at that later on. And I think that's everything that's kicking around here. Obviously you can spend shards on uh, promotional awards and signatures, command XP. There is this mission, General Staff College, it contains one task and you receive one reward for completing all the tasks and the missions. And I assume it's a universal accommodation. If anyone's uh, picked this one up, uh, feel free to shout out what the General Staff College mission is. Action Popper, hello, hello, hello. Finally secured the Charles Martel Scarab skin. Yeah, I've, I've seen you've been shouting out for that one. Hello, Stuart Wheel as well. Hello, hello, hello. Um, right, so that's really the only stuff that's in the special. We'll just grab our free daily crate. I don't mean anything else kicking around here. So that's the that's the special, I guess you could say. Now, um, so that just takes us up to these free crates. Now, usually I don't like opening crates while on stream. It's not my thing. However, what we do is um, we'll, we'll talk about the drop rates of the Halloween container. Um, we'll, we'll open one. So um, this is the Halloween container. It kind of opens like a, an egg out of uh, aliens, I kind of thought. Anyway, the drop rates are... As follows, um, there's a 25% chance that you'll get 12 Halloween 21 camouflages, 14% uh, chance you'll get 7 promotion orders, 12% chance you'll get 20,000 global XP, 12% uh, chance you'll get 7 days premium count, 7% chance of 15 promotion orders, which I got there, 6.5% uh, chance for single insignia, 5% chance of a single accommodation, 2% for the full, each of the following. Um, Halloween camouflages, uh, the Charmer for the Iowa, the Hyper Viper for the Hipper, the Jeweler for the Xinyang, uh, Fury for the Furious, Pestilent Varg for Bismarck, the Eternal Scarab for Charles Mattel, uh, congratulations Action Pumper on that one, uh, the Terrifying Gorgon for the Shakuku, uh, the Revenous Ghoul for the Benson, an Octopus for the Megami, and then last but not least, there's a 0.5% chance of getting the Ark Royal and the related mission in order to actually acquire her, I believe. So hopefully that takes us through all of that. And just another daily, that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll drop off that. So what we'll do after this, um, we'll probably try and split this stream a little bit evenly between the two stars of the show, which is obviously the Perth and the Ark Royal. Still, we've got the Ark Royal from the container. 
or did you purchase? I guess that's one thing that's worth mentioning. Before we start, start taking a deeper look at the Ark Roll, obviously the Ark Roll is available in the store. Now she is available on her own for 10,000 doubloons. Uh, for all for 19,200 doubloons, you can get an additional British Crown to create two insignias, five promotion orders, and 15 of each of the epic booster flags. Um, it's interesting to put insignia in there now. I think that's, that's definitely of interest. Anyway. Yes, so we're going to skip that for now. Let's. Well, we've already got the right filter on, so let's just jump all the way down to the arc roll. Let's have a look at them. Container! Oh, very nice, Stuart. Very nice. That's a 0.5% chance as well. So there's the, uh, the arc roll and her permanent camouflage, I believe. She's got. Reasonable. Well, at least she looks quite reasonable. As some of you may know, I have actually built the miniature for Ark Royal for Victrix C tabletop game. So, uh, yeah, she looks. Yeah, she looks accurate. You know what I'm going to say? Let's take a look at her from an armor perspective. It's obviously no armor's deck. Um, and she's only. She's covered in enough to basically kind of deal with. 8 inch shells and low caliber AP and HE, so yeah, she's not she's not got armor, is the best way to put it. Let's take off the bow and the stern. Let's take off the torpedo bulge. Let's take off the superstructure, tiny superstructure, but what do you expect from a carrier? Take away the uh, the upper deck, which is that absolutely humongous module there. And yeah, again, another thin deck, and okay, yeah, so. Tiny Citadel, uh, if you're looking for the Citadel on the Ark Roll, uh, aim for that funnel, I would say. Because that Citadel goes, yep, right up to the edge of the ship. Very nice. Ooh. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a reasonable sized um, Citadel, but it is stepped. In fact, you can actually see the stepping on the side of the hull. It's a bit odd. It's almost like it's... a it always feels a bit like a town class cruiser. Don't know, Ark Roll GG. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, over here, let's have a look. Uh, carpet bombing. Dive bombers can drop a huge amount of bombs at once. Is that what they define as carpet bombing? Bot bombing. Okay. Onboard factory, high aircraft restoration speed. Okay, that could be quite good because that would counter the feeble aircraft, which is the down right here, which is obviously the aircraft have below average HP pool. Okay, so you could probably expect to lose a lot of aircraft but uh, they should regen reasonably quickly. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look at what the Furious was like in regards to stats. 11.482, okay, if it won. Let's have a quick look. Okay, right, let's have a look at Arc Roar then. Okay, that might that should come down once you put a commander on it, so that's that seems alright compared to Furious. Makes sense really because Arc Roll does have a very high freeboard. Maneuverability seems alright. Um obviously that AA rating is gonna look a bit low because my commander build is very AA heavy. Okay, individually the aircraft seem to have significantly less HP. I think from Furious we were looking at like 3,800, give or take. Um, that's definitely dropped. Text range 9. 5,300, 3,750. Okay, let's have a quick look at Furious again, because obviously I'm got, that's what I'm going to be comparing against. Um, 5,000, 5,000. Die bombers individually, the bombs look weaker and the bombs look weaker torpedoes look just as good torpedoes look very good aircraft new bit the speed is back to on par survivability okay so arc Royal stats don't look too bad um, and um, I'll take a see what we got camera wise okay we'll show the well, I say I'll show the Halloween skin. Obviously, I have it turned off. Uh, but this is what the Ark Royal would look like without a camouflage on, which actually doesn't look too bad either. 
Okay, we'll keep the camera on. Uh, Flag-wise, obviously we're going to go for something British. Uh, London or Gallant? Let's do London. Booster flags, we're just going to put the usual stuff on. Just because we can. I usually always would put a credit booster on a carrier because sometimes the credit only can be a bit low. Let's put Boyd on and we're going to stick with the Boyd build that I have on the go at the moment. Uh, for those of you who are interested. Uh, Anti-aircraft. 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 Torpedo damage. Torpedo bomber HP and detectability. Overall ship detectability. And obviously additional consumables. Still, we have bought 10 containers and not complaining one bit. Oh, fair enough, especially if you're getting um, if I'll grow off of that. Brings my good morning and evening, Major. Oh, good evening. Um, chat, hope things are well. Yeah, well, we've got our grow. No complaints here. Right. Okay, so I'm probably going to stick with the same kind of build. Um, modules wise, I would usually go. First of all, I usually prioritize anti aircraft capability. I'd skip secondaries, so I'd probably go for improved aircraft restoration time. Obviously, that will help because the aircraft are fragile. Then I'd go for the anti-aircraft capability because I, I want to... Chances are this carrier will be spotted by aircraft. If it's spotted by aircraft, I want to do what I can to dissuade um, the enemy from attacking me. Okay, that takes the air rating actually up to, apparently, above what Furious should be, uh, which, isn't, which isn't too bad. So she might have a better chance of fending for herself. Let's see. Furious has got one dual purpose gun there, one there, one there. So actually, and one at the stern. Uh, so she's got six dual purpose four inch guns, six turrets with six pairs. Arc Royal's got eight pairs. Okay, so obviously Arc Royal has more heavy anti aircraft capability. Um, also, Arc Royal has. Four octoplet pom poms, whereas Furious has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pom poms. Okay, so Argoro has got less medium range anti aircraft capability, but Argoro appears to have more close range with those Vickers machine guns, but I wouldn't really want to rely on those Vickers machine guns um, too much. Um, it's a shame that she's got Vickers machine guns. Um, I'm surprised she hasn't got 20 mil looking. I don't know if she ever was fitted with 20 mil looking. But oh well, oh well. Okay, so all in all, uh, having a look at um, our girl, she doesn't seem to be a bad carrier overall. In comparison to the Furious, she seems to be competitive i would guess you could say so let's go see how she actually physically plays um obviously with those large squadrons and individually lower hp but faster restoration time bombs individually do less damage but you are dropping more of them because you're obviously larger attack squadrons the torpedoes do look very good the torpedoes haven't changed that much and you're dropping an extra one So we'll probably do a couple of games in the arc roll, see how she fares after a couple of games, and then we'll take a look at the perf. I didn't rotate the uh, the poster in the um, in the office mode. I forgot about that. I could do that in between games. Maybe see if I end up getting sunk or something. Okay, the sensibility circle doesn't seem to be ridiculous, but this is a very large map. We we'll start off with bombers as always. So we are flying swordfish, which are the same aircraft that the Hermes comes with. So they are, let's say, a tier lower, potentially. Then what's the Good evening. Good evening. Uh, no complaints about the models or the color scheme on the swordfish. Uh, let's do a dummy run. Uh, yeah, that's carpet bombs. That's not dive bombs. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. War spite, Sharnhorst, and an Ismail. That's three battleships. 
We have a Prince. Oh, Prince Hydric. Oh. If you haven't got any support, I'm going after you. You got a cruiser with you. What's that cruiser? Devonshire. Oh, that could be a bit dangerous, but we'll go for it. Okay, the reticle, I would say, feels a bit um, smaller than, say, the, um, uh, the Furious. Uh, I'm fe definitely feeling the aircraft agility. Um, I've lost a lot of aircraft there. I think Arc Raw might be one for, um, for potentially doing safety drops with, maybe. I might do a quick turn around. Well, the Arc Royal Bombers, I do like especially trying to hit destroyers uh, in air. Yeah. Destroyers in spoke. In spoke. I definitely say the, um, the you drop a lot more bombs. You drop it seems like six bombs per aircraft. I'll have to obviously do a double check of the stats. I think my question is, if you are running this many aircraft, and you are losing this many aircraft potentially, um, what is the actual aircraft restoration like? Now, I did set a fire on the Prince Heinrich. I could go after the Scharnholz. Going after the Scharnholz is actually quite tempting, because she's over here on the road. Torpedoes like I t the way the torpedoes get thrown from these set uh, this, these aircraft does seem a little bit hilarious. Very nice. Very nice torpedoes. Let's do a little maneuver over here. I think I might be worth my interest working this flank over. We have flooding on the shambles, which is running away. There she goes. Who's next? Do we have a war spy? War has some reasonable anti-aircraft capability. She's got some pom-poms. She's got some dual-purpose four-inch guns. Not massively impressive, though. However, Prince Heinrich is going to be obviously slightly more advantageous target. So we're going to have a crack at that. Also, she's a lot more isolated compared to the other two. That's a lot of bombs. That's pretty much a guaranteed fire per attack. Aircraft definitely have a lot larger turning circle. You're not going to be turning on a dime as you would with the uh, Furious. Barely any kind of expansion of the reticle when you're turning those aircraft in on the target. That's going to make those these aircraft very good at, say, doing those kind of last-minute adjustments. I know I'm going to lose this aircraft, but I might as well. Right, okay. I think I'm going to keep my... I'm going to want to move my carrier around a little bit. I'm just going to have to try and keep options open because I'm just seeing the left flank's taken. I'm not really sure what our left flank's doing. Okay, I think that's going to be the first part I'm going to mention. So our left flank looks open. Our right, the right flank looks like it's going to open up. And unfortunately with the carrier, it's not exactly the kind of ship you can use just to push through the centre. 
I see the Prince Heinrich is stuck up against the island here, so potentially I might be able to um, get a run in from the back here. Yes, yeah, it looks like she's backing up, so we'll, we'll take this opportunity. where it's going to cause flooding. Very nice. Okay, there she goes. Let's see if we can go after the Ismail. Actually, honestly, it's probably worth me having a crack at the war spike because she's obviously used damage control. We'll get a good fire or two on the uh, war spike. That is going to be very handy dandy. Let's reposition our carrier. Just got to keep my eyes peeled a little bit about what's going on, especially with that is melt. Should be enough. Oh, I thought she suddenly backed up. Looks like she just stopped still. Right, she's doing a hard to. So I can do a hard to starboard turn. And it should bring me up on the stern of the target. I do think this war spike has propulsion mods. So she can have a fire. Okay, noting the war spike's leg in it, and this cap's open. The smaller reticle is actually quite nice because it means that you're not so reliant on having to hit the target on its broadside. It's almost basically the Graf Zeppelin's reticle, but a lot more useful because you drop so many more bombs. I find that the Graf Zeppelin, because you drop so few bombs and that reticle is so big, you just end up missing. Whereas a Vark Royal, because that reticle, although it's a bigger reticle, was in like because it's circling and now she's attacking a vessel from any angle and it's um, you're dropping so many bombs into that reticle it actually almost guarantees you will hit something so you can almost approach any any vessel from any angle with that reticle and drop an absolute hell ton of bombs and you're guaranteed to get at least a hit I do find the targeting reticle narrows quicker when you don't speed up or slow down the engines. Just one. Basically, you're going to have to pay 5,000 doubloons for additional 2,000 shards for the perm if you do the free events uh, premium BB Halloween mission. I think it's you have to spend about 1,000 doubloons to get about 300 shards. I think that's what's needed. I think you have to do the free Halloween difficulties, plus the daily missions, which will get you more shards, plus the um, the missions associated with the Japanese tier um, uh, tier three.
definitely, definitely get rid of three of these. Yeah, I do think Arc Royal is probably a lot more deadly um, than Furious. Arizona. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I'm a crib was doing the math. Um, I think it's all, uh, unfortunately, I think it's all in odds and sods. Um, let's see if I can find it. But I think there's going to be 20 days of daily missions. Each day granting you 110 shards. So that's 2,200 2, shards. Then let me just tab up until I can find his other comments. Then there's 4,500 shards from the three difficulties of the Halloween mode. Then 3,000 shards for the mission associated with the Japanese tier 3 battleship. So that leaves you 110 shards short. Which you'll then have to purchase with the balloons as part of a bundle. I I like Agra. I think she might be a, a little overtoned. I'll be honest. However, the gameplay definitely feels significantly different compared to the Furious, to the point where it does it's definitely is a different experience in comparison. It is potential that maybe her aircraft her aircraft are a little overtoned. I think especially the H E bombers. I think if anything's gonna happen with this ship, I think you might see her high explosive bombers get tweaked. Not by much, not by much. I think any changes will probably be incredibly minor if they decide they're going to do that. Oh, managed to get the arc roll with five crates and two free and three doubloon brought. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I said, I mean, one million silver. Ah. Uh, damn, don't think I'll be able to do that. Guess it's back to the Leander since the Fiji was nerfed for some uh, if, if, for frivolous reason. The Fiji was. The Fiji. Is was the, is the Fiji a strong uh, ship? Yes. Did the Fiji need a half second reload nerf? Probably not. Um, however, I don't. I haven't found the Fiji wanting or lacking um, due to um, those changes um, or that that single change. Um, and in fact, I, so I, I don't think it's as bad. There was uh, no correction. Six crates, uh, but it was the first one that appeared when I pressed open or. Uh, Fair enough, yeah. Let's see. Um, we'll do another, another arc roll again. Let's see how she does. But she seems to be doing alright. Well, uh, we'll do a shipping forecast this time. Tier 4 or 5 game. That's a Haru for Buki, Omaha. Pride of Valiki, the Flinger, New York, Fuso, New Mexico, Ruggio. I do like to move my carrot at least a little bit. That feels a little bit too dangerous. Let's do that. And then we'll see where we go. Pride of Valiki, Omaha, and Okay. 
I do like seeing the swordfish up here at tier 5, I'll be honest about that. Because that was one thing that we couldn't quite get before. New York. New uh, enemy carrier has not dropped fighters. That is definitely of interest. And now he's actually trying to fly through my fighters. Uh, oh, we have the ferret, the flinger here, and the fur attacker. Not exactly a lot of AA that I'm going to be super concerned about. Enemy carrier spotted. I think we're going to go after the New York again because I noticed that he has damage conned. There you go, that's going to be our damage over time. Let's get our carrier positioned a little bit more forward. Let's use some torpedo bombers this time. And we'll go after the Diffling. Uh, Pixel Mark, it's just the concept of the nerf that rubs me the wrong way. Okay, yep, no, fair enough. <laughs> I'll grant you that. It's not hard to uh, do. Uh, it's not a hard ship to counter. That is true. I uh, just need to be mindful of the angle and just how far it is from the shell arcs. Yeah, that is very true. Right, what we're doing is we're looking for flooding, and we're also going to keep an eye out to see if the AA of the fur attacker lights up. Because if the AA of the fur attacker doesn't light up. Oh no, okay, so she's, she is AFK, but she's not disconnected. seen an opportunity here so I might as well take it. Also, um, time to go after the New Mexico again. Jeff, hello, hello, hello. I didn't realize, to be honest, even I didn't realize I was streaming today. It was kind of a, um, a last minute thing on the, on the way home from work. I was like, oh, the one's working today. Um, so I was kind of free this evening. And uh, furthermore, um, after all, and Perth has been dropped into my port, so it kind of makes sense to, to have a dabble. I'm spotted probably by the destroyer.
Sorry, things uh, got a little intense there. Very big circles on these aircraft. Oh boy, okay. Where am I? Oh yeah, Jeff Dave. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Sorry. Uh, there was. Uh, ooh. Oh. Um, yeah, that reticle being circular with the bombs fill uh, almost the reticle. Uh, even if you uh, don't uh, let it hone in, it's pretty much a hit on the destroyer. If the yeah, if it's smoke and fire an AA left on. Very nice point, name of those. Nice point. Like that. Oh yeah, that just fills that reticle. Right, let's actually get the carrier into the point. Let's go after the fur attacker and actually get a cap. Oh, dog licks! Hello, hello, hello! Uh, you gotta love the barrel, uh, the barrel music in the background. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice selection of uh, military marching, marching band music, and oh, obviously the. The odd patriotic tune, I guess you could say. What's this? It's a Ruggio. Mm. I could go after the Ruggio. Tempting as it may be. However, I do know somewhere over here should be an AFK fur attacker. There it is. So let's go after that. Uh, Jeff, I haven't played the arc yet. Just the Halloween mode. Fair enough. One game in the Quachi, and uh, when I wasn't working. Uh, what's the arc like? Um, different to, however, um, I'd say on par with Furious, although the HE Bombers a lot less damage per bomb, but a lot more damage. Let's see. I think the re enemy Rougeau is actually going after me, which is quite interesting. That should be enough. I might even have enough. Go, go on, go on, go on. We sank an enemy cruiser. Oh, that's not going to work. Neptune's beard. But yeah, no, I, I think uh, she's quite nice. In all I see. I think her HE bombers might be a little over tweaked. And they might get slight changes due to, just due to the, the inability to actually miss. And just pick some of those. She's a pretty good ship. Uh, consistent fires on bombs here. I saw the major rip 12k off from New Mexico one drop early in this game. Oh boy. <laughs> don't, don't mention it. But yeah, at the moment, we're, we're, we're do. Let's see. Let's do at least one more game in the Ark Royal. Um, but yeah, and then we'll look at maybe the post battle results. But yeah, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty reasonable, I would say. Better than I can probably do in Furious. Although I do feel like if the Ark Royal goes up against any dedicated AA build, she is uh, in for a rough time. 
I give you that. I give you that, especially with the uh, aircraft HP being almost 1,800 HP lower uh, than the Furious. However, you do get three more aircraft, which kind of adds up probably the total sum of HP in the squadron. Let's see where we're at now. Zoiho, New Mexico, Matsu, Pensacola, London, Omaha, Collinsburg, 261 Bas Basturas, I guess. Um, we seem to be getting blessed with tier 4 and 5 games. And, okay, so at least this one you can kind of see the Hyundai Detective with reticle pushes all the way out to the cap. Did I miss uh, all the Perf games? If yes, thoughts. Um, not, we haven't touched the uh, Perf yet. We're just mess tinkering around the Ark Raw. We'll probably call this the the last game of the Ark Raw, and then we'll um, take a look at maybe the post battle results of the three games, and maybe I I'll give some thoughts and opinions. But I think uh, I've already been. I think you've already got a good idea what my thoughts and opinions are anyway so far. I like the way the aircraft are different. But the, the the carrier feels very similar. Pensacola could be a bit irritating. Maybe we see if we can go do like a HE drop on the Pensacola, because that might destroy most of her AA. I would say, yeah, if you if you want to play an anti-aircraft cruiser, I would probably recommend this to be the time, because deplaning and uh, an arc roll is going to be pretty critical. That's like 5k off of Pensacola. There's another cruiser over there. It's London, okay. We'll be done 7k to the Pensacola. Okay, Pensacola's buddying up with the London, so I think the Collinsburg's looking like a rather tempting target because she's isolated on her own. That's one thing you always have to sometimes do with it as a carrier, you have to just watch the map and pick your targets depending on how the enemy spreads themselves. I'm going to drop some aircraft there, they're probably going to get chewed up by the Pensacola, however. She looks like she might do a bit of a left turn, so... Yeah, those torpedoes are so slow. Master, there she is. Yeah, no, I'm not used to these aircraft. Ooh, alright. Prince Code is weak. Prince Code is very weak. I think we have got to have a crack at that Prince Code. Let's really lead it. Nothing there. I don't think they're going to make it. We're also spotted, which is interesting. And there's no allies. Oh. Right, okay. Well, bombs away on the um, Pensacola, then swing it round onto the um, London. Shouldn't take too long. I wasn't expecting my flank to die so quickly. It's 
my bad though, my positioning. So Oh, that's a very nice tempting target. Ah, oh, the video of the aircraft is getting to me this time. I think I've been blessed with trying to target probably Rab and Lackluster move away targets. The dispersion of those torpedoes is a bit weird as well. Maybe I should have gone for the T61 earlier. Might be a bad move. Oh no. Right. Ah, there's one. Yeah, not as good again that one. No, well. Now the California finally kills the London. <laughs> Took him long enough. Took torps look hard to master, but the bombs don't appear to miss. Yeah, that's true. I think the torps. <laughs> It's not really the tops too much. I think it's more the, the, just getting used to those turning circles with the aircraft. The furious they turn on the dime. Agro, you got to kind of let him go up, let him go a bit, and then turn, come back. Some people making five stars on the uh, on the nightmare mode. Fair enough. Toys look like they're from tier three, but the HE from tier seven. So they mash the two together on Agro. Plain HP feels a bit low. Yeah, I think it's fair. I think yeah, it's just I think the only thing that might need tweaking would probably be the HE bombs just because they are so devastating. But in general, the HE bombers are very good. The torpedo bombers um, are very good. It's just getting those kind of getting used to that aircraft maneuverability. Aircraft HE is lose low, so you will lose a lot of aircraft. Um, however, speeds all right on them. The carrier itself is very similar to the. Um, uh, what I want to say, very similar to the Furious, as in regards to its maneuverability and things like that, so I don't think it's too bad a chassis. The anti-aircraft capability of the Argrill is actually slightly better than the Furious, with more long range, uh, although she does have less mid-range and probably very weak close-in anti-aircraft capability. Well, this game's going to drag out a little bit, unfortunately, because it's now go hunt the single carrier. Uh, our team is up about 200 points.
That's what it might do. Well, um, we'll nip back to the port. How long that, can, that game could drag out five minutes. Potentially. A crunch tune is okay, but not a, uh, a patch on the Ashen Core, but oh, maybe we, well, that's one thing I haven't taken a look at. So, although that last game in the Arc World probably wasn't the grandest event, I guess you could say, um, the two games that we have had previously in the Arc World, uh, 136,000 damage and high caliber, and also then 131,000 damage. So, that was the two first games in the uh, Arc roll. The third game, only um, 24k. Um, I think just positioning just hurt us a little bit on that one. Right, um, let's grab the Perf, which is Pan, well, com Commonwealth, I should say. It's not Pan anything. So there she is, with her uh, historical camouflage. So obviously a Amphion class or modified Leander class uh, cruiser. So she's going to share a lot of traits and similarities with the Leander because obviously they're they're practically sisters. So first of all, starting off with let's do the overview. Hidden, basically good concealment because she's quite small. Agile, that could be interesting. Clearing fog, obviously she's got that crawling smoke screen that keeps her covered at quarter speed. And obviously there is some obviously comments there down the bottom regarding the um, the, the ship. Only three Amphions were built. Okay. Oh, uh, the game with the last game in the arc roll. Okay, middle of the pack with a 24k game. Okay, ah, not too bad. I thought I was going to get punished a lot more. Armor scheme is exactly the same as the Leander, if you're familiar with it. So, basically, superstructure is practically 10 to 14 millimeters plating. The bow and the stern are capable of ricocheting up to 8 inch AP caliber guns. Um, the the Citadel is obviously all above water and he's coated in cruiser grade armor of 76 to 160 millimeter armor. Move in the bow, move the superstructure, move the turret, move the upper bow. Okay, the Citadel is at the waterline, so it doesn't poke up, which I'm a little surprised at. However, um, hmm. Let's take a look at the Leander for comparison. Leander's got thinner bow and stern armor. Okay, so Perth's got an improvement there. Superstructure looks to be the same. Turrets look to be the same. Upper armored belt looks the same. Citadel looks the same. Possibly a little less armor on the Sister of the Perth. But it's interesting to see that she's got that slightly better armor scheme. I just say, Arc World is overpowered. Yeah, so, so are most Japanese aircraft carriers. They should all be nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> Any special skills for Farkham? Uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. Very interesting design for the Perth. Both funnels le leading towards each other. It's not. The both funnels are actually you've fallen for the carrier scheme there, Crib. Both funnels are vertical. However, the camouflage scheme of the perv has added extra um, plating and paint painting to the funnels to make them look like that. To basically mean that you couldn't read. It's just kind of distract. Um, from the silhouette of the ship, to disrupt the, the silhouette of the ship. So it's quite a unique uh, camouflage scheme because it obviously requires inqu additional metal plates added uh, to the uh, to the perf. So that's a, a cheeky little historical addition, which I quite like. Okay, sonar, nothing special. Defensive air fire gun symbol or the catapult fighter. Let's stick with it. Okay, defensive AA fire consumer does add to the AA capability, so let's just drop it off. Smoke, obviously the crawling smoke screen. Let's pop a flag on. Let's put it under. 
Um, let's look at the rest of the stats. Slow ability. That seems fair. That seems fair as well. 7.5. Seven point five. Okay, it's the same pretty much. Obviously, she's got HE and AP, and that's normal fuse AP, not special AP. Torpedoes, two quadruple launchers, eight kilometers range. That all looks pretty normal. AA is nothing to shout about. Maneuverability, seven point six. That is with steering gears. Okay, it's a smidge better than Leander. Smidge, 0 0.2 seconds. Tactability 10.8. Okay. So I think you're just going to go for... Part of me is almost tempted to go, well, if you're going to... Go for the defensive AA fire consumable. Let's just go for the um, the additional AA. Shaku got nerfed into the ground. Yeah, but they brought it back. It needs to go back into the ground. <laughs> we put the team up against America and Saipan. Oh, no, no, no. Leave Saipan until we get a proper British carrier. No, no, no like audacious or something. Then, then we team up against Saipan. <laughs> oh, don't fight team up, Major. <laughs> and to go to Britain and Japan with rule once again. I don't care if I'm blind, God, I've fallen for the British again. Just bury me. <laughs> um, okay, so that's modules. Uh, let's do Commander, Commander, Commander. So obviously, we'll go... For, yeah, well, you kind of have to go for Farkham. Um, I think Farkham does make sense. So space trait reduces detectability when firing. Detectability time when uh, of your ship after firing main battery inside smoke. And your ship's detectability range after firing your main battery in smoke. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go, but well, if you're going to go AA with this ship, you might as well just go all in. Smoke screen radius, smoke screen detectability range. Okay. Ooh, let me just get this sorted. That's kind of tempting. Um, I'm kind of, oh, these glasses are hurt a little bit. Which is a bit annoying. Um, or shell from the ghost. Your cruiser main gun battery range inside smoke screen. The cruiser's main battery shell grouping when inside smoke. Basically makes your guns more accurate in smoke. Um, punch through Velarusha's light fortress. I'm noting that with this commander, you don't get any rudder shift capability, which is slightly unique for a cruiser. I think definitely go for fully packed. Dispersion time, deployment time, that makes the smoke last longer. Oh, there is um, there is a rudder shift. On alert. That's a unique, that's a new one, isn't it? Show a fire warning indicator for incoming long range enemy fire. It basically just lets you know when you might die. Let's do smoke on the water, and let's do smoke screen radius and durability, and then let's go for let's go for Velarusius. Let's give this man a promotion. Let's see. So she's got four smoke screens, duration of ninety-three seconds, and a reload of one hundred and fifty-eight seconds. So first of all, let's put one of those on. Let's put one of those. No, we don't really need that, actually, do we? Put one of those on. Uh, I'll just convert some of these. Put one of those on. I'd be tempted to go for the defensive A fire consumable. And I want to see what happens. By nation. What happens if I put Togo 
and where is the chap? Von Spiel. Ninety three seconds, hundred and thirty four seconds. Okay, it's a bit of an oddity build, but I'm tempted to try it. And what I'll do, I'll have a quick look at the uh, at the crate that I've got there, because I see what's going on. Yeah, it's just a commander crate. No, not audacious, Major. We need Indomitable. <laughs> um, I want that. Uh, big hanger. Yes, ha uh, hanger. Definitely not something else. Um, <laughs> careful now, careful now. Uh, fully packed and refill station for one commander. Um, that gives away that he is only cruiser commander for this nation, potentially. Yeah, it might make sense because I'm probably not expecting many um, Commonwealth cruisers. I wonder how long the firing smoke penalty with Balancer Fast Unique skill uh, base plus uh, max out. Um, well, let's see. Detectability and firing smoke. It's only 4.9 with the base commander. I don't think you need to make that any better. 4.9 is pretty close. Smoke firing penalty for Perth. Um, yeah, so it's 4.9 kilometers. Um, probably would be 20 seconds if you did get detected. Reducing it by 7% is not a lot. It's probably reducing it by about 1.7 seconds from 20 seconds. Okay, let's have a dabble at Perth. Um, we've gone for like a smoke reload build. It might not be the best build. I'm just dabbling with the idea of it. I mean, she can only really um, deal with cruisers. Oh, I got Fubuki for attacker, Makarov, Trento, Konig, Gavar, Nevada, Sirov. Okay, so at least it is a carry game. I've got to remember not to try and go into autopilot again. 4.9 kilometers sounds good. Uh, each, uh, every other Royal Navy cruiser is at 5.5. That's obviously with this commander put on, and he's level 12, oh, level 13, legendary 2. And it's not like you're going to get any, not going to put any other command on it. So I think it's quite low anyway. Oh, on British cruisers. Um, it might be kind of beneficial. Maybe beneficial if you're going to go for like a, a sneaky Exeter build. That could work because obviously Exeter has 8 inch guns, which has an increased um, detectability. Let's have a look. Torpedo angles. Uh, they're not. Not superb, but they do. Let's see, gun angles. Mm. Okay, so she is going to have to flick it out quite a bit. Oh no, come for me. Oh no, you're not coming for me. I'm only going to try and use defensive air fire consumer as a self defense weapon. For attacker. And she feels Leanderish, I guess you could say. Does the commander have a unique voiceover? Let's show them what we're made of. No, it's British. Yep, Chris Wright, just standard British.
almost can do what you want with this smoke screen, isn't it? I think maybe a, uh, a smoke screen with a reload was uh, a bit of a bad idea. Enemy cruiser destroyed. But the smoke screen is quite nice. Didn't really need to do that. No, I'm not, really, I'm not really too sure whether to say the smoke screen build was a bad idea or a good idea. But it's nice to know that it's going to come back quite quickly and I haven't got to wait too long for it. Alternatively, what else could you do alternatively? Maybe go for a smoke. Um, hmm, what else could you do alternatively? Maybe a concealment build could be quite nice. sure how we're going to flip this with two battleships neither of our cruisers really has the capability to to rush around there and hope for the best oh but the destroyer goes and ups and leaves and he comes back out that way. Fire. Torpedoes to starboard. Problem solved, sir. Just kind of noting how um, I'm all by myself. 
with two barrels, two hungry, hungry battleships behind me. Neither of which is an entertaining situation to be in. Hopefully the hungry, hungry battleships are hungry, hungry for torpedoes. Apparently not. Oh, that's the game. <sighs> Smoke screen something that nice. Just didn't really get to do much that well. Oh, four kilometers. Uh, four kilometers sounds better. For a Belfast base chief having a unique skill with uh, the smoke firing penalties for command kilometers is Belfast for free. So. I want to know how extreme I could take there with the Commonwealth Commander. <sighs> the thing is, there's all right taking it to the extreme, but I don't know what you do with all of that. What are you going to do with all that smoke? Um, kind of reload felt nice, but also at the same time was not that impressive. 134 seconds. Hmm. I don't think that's quite worthwhile. You could just go for a classic maneuverability build, which might make sense because you might end up in open water. Part of me does also like the idea of a concealment build. I think there's a lot of ways you could play this one. Part of me is really insane the idea of going for like an AA build. Which is not a good build. Let's see. Because if you go for an AA build, you go, well, that's 7.2%. Come on, come on, come on. That's 8.5. So now I'm looking for anything that's better than 7.2. That's a 9%. So now I don't think I'm going to get anything better than that. So that's 9% and 8.5. So just out of interest. What is the AA build of this? Only a 60. It's really not worth it. Um, what does the smoke end up going to? 148. Oh, see, even all of all those reloads, it just doesn't work out. I think you're just going to end up playing it safe. I, I really do think you're just going to end up playing it safe and just going to go, well, I want some rudder or I want some speed. And if you're going to do speed, maybe a Fraser and a speed? No, is it Muller? That means something German. Voila. If you go for a bit of speed, 37 knots. Hmm. Oh, I didn't finish my coffee. Sound patch, hello, hello, Major just joined the stream. The patch sound for is amazing. Please give her a spin. Already given her about three spins at the start of the stream, though. Italian DD commander for inspiration for Farncom. Maybe, maybe. That could be interesting for Pallet Well, you need to get yourself a division. I was lucky enough uh, to be in two games with divisions of uh, Medium and Nightmare. Oh, fair enough. Jeff, I already said I've given my opinion before, but if my team just keep messing up Halloween events for me, I'll uh, end up buying the 20 crate bundle for 7,000 shards in it. <laughs> okay, let's give this another dapple. I'm 
going to go over to the far flank to support those two ships. It's interesting that she does have this ability to have defensive AA fire consumable and sonar and smoke. However, her AA capability is pretty poor, that it's not really worth taking advantage of. You can't really get any advantage of it. Andy Mac, hello, 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 evening. Quick look. Omaha, Gorky, Exeter, Pensacola, New York. I've got my right flank here. Ismail, Queen Elizabeth, New Mexico. Oh no. Oh yes. Right, 
Turn the ship around, we engage. Oh. It was turn out I managed to do Nightmare with no divisions, but there were three destroyers, uh, uh, me and the crews, and one battleship. Yeah, I've heard that the destroyers can be, a, like, if they just keep chucking out torpedoes across this, like, go at the flanks, keep torping across the center, they do uh, do help a lot. That hate perf HE shatters a lot. No, we are targeting battleships, is fair enough. So, Dave, I think, Admiral, that I might do the Koachi mission and then buy the bundle to get the shards, 20k golds. It's a lot of cash though, yeah, that's true. Especially for tier 5, bear in mind. She's only really worth 10,000 doubloons. Jeff, don't remind me of the price. I'm already thinking of sell my wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> Just put an arm in the leg in the post and send it to Wargaming Prague. Well, there is a discount currently for doubloons on PlayStation. I still don't feel that justifies it. Oh, damn, I was hoping she'd uh, move forward. Do some more help, carrier.
Sorry, this is taking a lot of my concentration. Which probably means I'm pulling all sorts of faces. Go on, torpedo. Oh. I could smoke up, but I don't, do I need to? I just need to not die. Queen Elizabeth just most certainly feels that does, does not want to come anywhere near me. Oh, she has HE, yes, yes. Randy, honey, black, silicon, wedding bra ba bands are all the range these days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't be so nasty, Randy. <laughs> I have the I have a big black box which uh, can levitate in pink uh, can levitate a pink box. <laughs> oh. If I could get the person, I would just just stand the hang here. I think. Pretty much hit 7.5 second reload uh, cruiser. That's on its own a big achievement major. Oh, we did 100k. Oh, okay. We do uh, we do one more game in the perf obviously just to. Um, just to keep it like work free, free of each guest ship. I like having you myself, Admiral Griff, uh, but no dedicated commander yet. Mm, true, true. Yeah, that's my problem as well. I had to sacrifice the base commander for my hanging build. He was already set up for DDs before. Yeah. Although I guess it, I guess all all in due time. I guess I might get um, tech tree uh, pan Asian. Um, cru cruisers. We should also see another member of the Arafusa class and the Dido class cruiser come to the game under their flag. Aguilar, Conningsburg, Hawkins, Bedoyne, Duca de Osta, Iron Duke, Karanghi, and Doria, and the Ruggio. JB, hello. Does the major also play Commonwealth ships uh, since they're related to his beloved British? <laughs> yes, <laughs> he does. Uh, I have to play Perth. She's a modified Leander. Oh, I was hoping there would be a 
big shebang going on over at Charlie, but at the moment it's all quiet on this side. And strangely, uh, we have got a good dedicated uh, commander for Premium Perth, but not the Premium Cranky, uh, both are Tier 5 former British cruisers. I think it might be because with the Perth, there's like there's only very few premium uh, Commonwealth cruisers. There's this one and there's a Indian one. Um, whereas with say the um, the Asian tech tree, there is um, the actual tech tree. Which is potentially forthcoming. So I think they probably didn't want to release a um, commander for the Hanky because they want to just keep. I don't know. See how the actual uh, how they want to do the cruisers. Does not stay in her smoke going in reverse. Bear that in mind. A broadside to Collinsburg? Wow, if you do say so, sir. Oh, three overpens. Well, the Hawkins is also obliging us with a broadside. Devonshire, go for health leather. I'd like to see maybe if I could pick the get, get the Collingsburg maybe to commit round here on her own, then I might have a reasonable chance of maybe toying with her. Uh, fun fact: the Commonwealth didn't have a single tech tree ship. All the ships are premiums uh, in the nation. Pan Asia, DD, and cruisers tech tree as well. That's why I think they're holding off on the um, Pan um, Asia Cruiser Commander. God, my eyes hurt when I look at the perf and that camera now. All I can see is uh, two, le two leaning funnels. Yeah, well, that, that's the whole purpose of the camo. So, I mean, oh, the coins being gone. Um, so, if, if it's caused, causing, causing that, uh, that simply means the camera's working. Some AP. I'm surprised I actually got hit with that last volley, considering I was doing just a lot gun view of it. 
she's bad, she's gone. Teammate, I need your support. I need intelligence data. Well, at least we have a carrier that might know what he's doing. He's coming over. That's good, 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 good. I owe you one. Big risk here, big risk. Nice play, nice play. Much obliged. Good show, jolly good show. In fact, I think the carry actually deserves that. Good show. Jolly good show. Smoke generator. Oh, okay, that iron jukes maybe a slightly more tempting target to hit. Because, oh, okay, I've got a fire in the inventory, so if I can get a fire in the Iron Duke. Okay, there we go. So now back to the Iron Duke, because he's used his damage gone. You can't really predict what these battleships are going to do. Time to go. Why won't you die? All I can say is this speed build's actually making her a little bit nice in open water because 
players just aren't so used or aren't expecting a, a Leander to be hitting these kind of speeds. That one is my bad because I hang ar hung around. Ooh, okay. So three games in Perth, three games in Arcro. Arcro is quite strong, um, and Perth is interesting. Definitely interesting. I say hello, hello, hello. Doesn't Leanne have a single funnel? Correct. She has well, she has two engines which you can then combine into a single funnel. The purpose of the single funnel was to obviously was to make it so that you couldn't see or determine the speed and angle of the ship from a distance. Uh, however, what this meant was that the engine space was actually joined, so it was just one big open engine space. So it's, if there was a hit, the engines would have got knocked out. So with the modified Leander class, they separate the engines with a uh, actual armored wall. Um, so it means there were two engine compartments, and they decided to go for two funnels because trying to trunk two funnels together from two separate engine rooms um, wasn't so ideal. That's, uh... I was wondering if Perth and Leander without camo with are identical war game and use the same model of both ships. No, no, they are different, they are different. Don't worry, that's a nice new expensive camo for the buy the Perth uh, before too long. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh... Right, okay. So, three games in the Perth. Yeah, Perth seems quite nice, quite reasonable. Um, no complaints. Three games in Arc Royal. Arc Royal, Arc Royal is absolutely strong um, but also enjoyable so let's see uh, we've got enough time for I think one last game so let me see what I could maybe showcase we also covered that um... I think that's that's really everything so I think um, although Maybe we could play the Halloween mode or something like that. I don't think we really need to. Um, I think we're all... Karachi game? Unfortunately, don't have the Karachi. I, 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 don't, I double check. I double check. But I don't think we got her. She's a tier 3, isn't she? Or is she a tier 4? No. No, we didn't get her. So, uh, yeah, Karachi... Um, Unfortunately not. Um, so being that we've done the arc roll, we've done the perf. I mean, we've, we've, we've done what we came here to do, <laughs> in all honesty. So I think I'll say, uh, I'll start doing my thank yous. And I think, I think arc roll deserves us in a nice position in the back. Considering that the first two games we've got in here are both 130k. Uh, I will be time stamping this live stream afterwards so people can obviously check out the ships as they go. Tier 3, yeah. No, nothing unfortunately in our ports. I did double check our Discord as well. So... Um, I'm going to go through. I'm going to say, uh, Wargaming didn't give Quatch the CCs. That's the first. Yeah, yeah, well, we have to grind for something, I guess you could say. Um, we have Arc Roll in the background. I think I'll we'll go through the chat and say hello. Well, basically, don't make sure I did say hello to everyone. I'll say, say thank you to everyone who has come to the chat. And uh, if you have enjoyed the live stream, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And obviously, feel free to subscribe if you haven't. And if, you, if you're just silently watching, you're, you're not showing the chat, then. Fair enough, thank you as well. Um, but yeah, I'd like to say thank you to Azuma, to Action Pumper, to Stuart Weir, to Danilo Bake, to Pixel Mug, to A Nameless Eternal, to Jets Fan, uh, to Jeff Day. I'd also like to say thank you to Dog Licks and Admiral Criv. Uh, let's see how it's also uh, thank you to Naruko and Randy Chang. Also thank you to Sniper Patch and Andy Mack. Also, thank you to JB. Yes, I do play other ships. Wait. <laughs> also, thank you to Asif Ahmed. I think that's everyone who's commented in the in the chat. I know it's a Monday at the end of the day, and it's also a slightly odd time to stream. I will confess, but yeah, thank you to everyone who has uh, popped by. Stay safe, stay well. And have definitely tried to enjoy the rest of your evening. Well, have a good day, good morning, good evening, and a good afternoon wherever you are in the world. As always, we haven't done this for a while, so let's have God Save the King as an outro. And 
until next time, stay safe, stay salty. I'm the Gav Major, and back to the port. Thank you everyone, and Pip Pip and Cheerio.